Hey, Anson Garcia here. We are going to go through Cisco Expressway CNE Primer. This is for Verizon internal employees only. So let's get started right away. Table of contents. So I'm going to go through four particular parts in this uh, training the product naming and a very high level uh, review. We're going to go through a solution review, which is a little bit deeper. Then we're going to go through deployment considerations when you're working with a customer. These are the things you want to uh, uh, be thinking of. Um, we're going to go through platform options, licensing, and migration as well. Now there will be a fifth part. The fifth part will go through very quickly the configuration. So I'll go through uh, spinning up the OVA, installing the license keys, uh, connecting call manager and cups. Um, creating digital certificates for the connection in between uh, the expressways and then and then subscribing to or creating uh, certificate requests uh, and um, going to GoDaddy and uh, fulfilling those requests and then bringing those down and installing them on the systems and then this will be peppered in with some demos there's some demos in the solution overview um, and then I think I have one or two maybe in the deployment considerations. So what are our, obje our objectives for this particular course, or my objectives for you, I should say? Um, I hope that you get a clear understanding of Cisco Expressway Core and Edge. I hope that you can uh, differentiate between Cisco VCS and Expressway two different products coming from the same software. The architecture of Expressway CNE, how everything fits together, uh, what are digital certificates, how are they fulfilled, what do they do, um, placement of these systems, uh, how they, uh, we're going to go through service discovery, how Jabber logs in, and we're going to look exactly what happens under, underneath the hood with DNS and TLS, things like that. I hope uh, to give you enough understanding of all the security elements of Expressway CNE, how they relate to Link, how they relate to um, uh, the VCS, the older VCS or the traditional VCS uh, control and edge. And I hope to give you a, a better understanding of the licensing of Expressway CNE. So, we're going to go through the product naming and high-level solution review. All right, so let's figure out the terminology here. I'll be saying uh, several things, and I want you to understand when I say something what the, the proper definition is. I have been using improper definition uh, de definitions over the year and over the past year about Expressway and Collab Edge, and also if I uh, uh, continue to use those uh, improper uh, definitions. Uh, within this uh, training. Uh, hopefully you can catch that and, and uh, make sure I refer back to this and um, understand uh, what I should have said because that language is still in my brain and it sometimes uh, comes out because I've been calling this thing something that it has, has not been. So collab, collaboration edge. This is just an umbrella term. Uh, if you older guys remember AVID, that was Cisco UC stuff, right? So collaboration edge is nothing more than a, an umbrella term. We have several products underneath that umbrella, or Cisco does. Cisco Expressway, what we're going to be talking about. Cube, which we already know about. TDM and analog gateways, which I hope you know about. And SRST. Now we won't go through any of these. I'm just telling you that these products are under the collaboration edge um, definition term. So uh, my third bullet there is Jabber VPNless Access Collab Edge. So you guys already know what uh, this thing we're going to talk about is Expressway. You know it's VPNless Access um, to Call Manager. Are the two terms uh, related at all? As I just said, no. Collab Edge is a term with several things under it. So is Jabber VPNless Access is that really Collab Edge? You know, you could argue yes or no, but uh, 
Uh, I would say no at this point. Collab Edge, again, is just a, uh, an umbrella term. Now, <clears throat> the capability is enabled under Cisco Expressway product, and that Expressway product uh, has a feature in it, and that feature is called Mobile and Remote Access. Okay, this guy right here. And then sometimes you'll hear myself and Cisco refer to as MRA. You see that MRA? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about remote, uh, mobile and remote access. Uh, okay, and then I'll talk about TCN points. If you're Cisco, you see guys, call manager, you don't know about BCS or the old Tamberg stuff. TCS is analogous, uh, excuse me, TC is analogous to saying iOS for Cisco routers. If I say iOS, you know I'm talking about uh, a 2800, 2900, and all the myriad of, 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 of Cisco routers. If I say TC endpoints, I'm talking about EX60s, EX90s, XXs, and there's a whole uh, slew of uh, uh, Cisco, Tamburg endpoints, video endpoints, video audio endpoints that use the TC software. So you hear Cisco throw this term around, and again, it's analogous to saying uh, iOS. Okay, let's continue on here. What is VCS Control and Expressway and Expressway Core and Edge? Or let me say it a different, different way. What is VCS Control and Expressway and uh, versus Expressway Core and Edge? Let me say it a different way. What is VCS control server and ex and VCS expressway server versus expressway core server and expressway edge server what are those things and why is the naming convention so uh, confusing so VCS control and VCS expressway is the old Tamburg trunk and line side IPPBX so if you're not familiar with Tamburg stuff, if uh, Cisco used to go in, sell Tamburg uh, endpoints, and, and the call control mechanism would be VCS control. And if the cust customer wanted uh, 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 telepresence endpoints, uh, TC endpoints, out in the internet, they'd have to um, have the VCS Expressway server as well. So again, you would have the VCS control, that's kind of the call control, everything would register, and then you'd have the VCS expressway, we'd put that in the DMZ, all the internet, you could put uh, immersive video endpoints out on the internet, and they would register back and uh, uh, do all this voodoo inside the DMZ to make things secure, like digital certificates and TLS and things like that. Now, in this traditional, I'm gonna call it traditional, traditional version of a VCS control and expressway, the way you light things up, the way you add licenses, the way you enable features are <clears throat> called software keys. Uh, you hear them called option keys, software keys, release keys, things like that. And you basically buy those. So you would buy the server or the server software, maybe you would deploy it in a, vir in a virtual environment, and you would do buy things like registrations. Hey, I have 20 endpoints. I need at least 20 registration licenses. Uh, I have I want to do traversal so traversal is um, if I need to translate maybe a customer has some old polycom uh, video endpoints and now they're buying Cisco stuff and they're throwing their own polycom uh, controller away but they want to use they got these high-end you know uh, flat screens with a polycom camera and all that stuff and, and it does standard based SIP or standard based H323 so if you, if you had like an H323 tam, uh, uh, polycom system and you wanted to talk to the SIP based um, uh, telepresence systems, you need a traversal license. Anytime you anchor media, there needs to be a translation of SIP, there needs to be a translation of codex, uh, anything like that. It, it, it traverses the expressway server, the VCS server, so, and we need traversal licenses. Okay, and then also we'll talk about B2B in a little bit. Uh, let's table that for now. And then there was find me licenses. So maybe you had a telepresence endpoint uh, a, a, on your desk, like an EX60 or 90, and then you had a cell phone and you wanted to find me a, a single number reach kind of thing. So it had the capabilities of call manager 
that we have today, right? So it was a, 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 a call control mechanism, and uh, you had to do tr uh, registrations, and then you had this traversal thing, and then you had uh, find me, which is single number reach kind of stuff. So the new server, Expressway Core and Expressway Edge, it's a new product. It's same. From, it, it, it's from the same code base. Okay, and we'll see that in a second. It's a new product, but it's doesn't come. It, it doesn't come with line side ability. Remember, I talked about VCS Control and Expressway able to register endpoints. Well, you cannot do that with Expressway Core and Edge. Nothing register registers to these servers. They register through them to call manager. Okay, so we can say that it, it, there's a proxy registration. It goes through them and uh, 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 to call manager. All right, and uh, it is also for uh, business edition. So uh, again, when you buy cool licenses, you're going to get this thing for free. You uh, you have to order it still. It's a zero uh, dollar item, but you have to order it when you order the cool licenses, and and then that gives you the keys that you need to light up this. Uh, a feature where you can have things out on the internet and connecting up to call manager, registering a call manager. And remember we said it's called remote and mobile access. That's the feature uh, name. And uh, that's all I got to say there. So let's take a look at the older traditional VCS architecture. It's important to understand this architecture to understand the expressway architecture. So let's look at VCS first. Here's what it would look like if we were talking about we're talking about things registering from the internet. Okay, that's all. I'm not going to go through everything, VCS and and there's TMS and there's scheduling, there's exchange integration. I'm not going through all that. I'm talking about call control and we're talking about bringing things in from the internet. That's all we're talking about for VCS. So don't get any um, uh, false uh, information here. That that's all that VCS does. It does a lot more. So what did it look like in traditional VCS architecture? Well, we had a Tamburg endpoint, let's say TC endpoint, over here. And you see the blue line right there. It would register with VCS control. And then we have a firewall here. And then we have this other server over here. It's VCS Expressway. It's inside the DMZ. And then we have another firewall. Now, this is the traditional DMZ architecture. It can be different, but usually when you talk about DMCs, this is kind of the pictures you're going to see. And then look at this blue line. There's this guy out on the internet over here. It, we'll call it another TC endpoint. It's registering from the internet. It's just hanging out on the internet. Maybe it's at someone's house connected to their uh, uh, cable modem or something like that. And it registers through the internet, through the firewall, through the VCS Expressway, all the way to VCS Control. Okay, so for you VCS guys that are real smart, I just want to show you that this can also happen too. You can register to here, and then um, there's some voodoo that we do to, to make sure calls can go through. But for the sake of this presentation and learning Expressway, I want you to think of the VCS architecture of an endpoint registering through the internet, through the DMZ, that proxy kind of de uh, registration and we're going to go to the VCS control okay remember the VCS control is the call control call control so now this this guy over here uh, can use all this secure mechanisms which we'll learn about later uh, and make calls into the enterprise so note where the registration is I, I told you this is the registration on the inside of the enterprise goes to control outside the enterprise it goes through VCS expressway through the DMT and to control. Note there is no call manager in this uh, architecture, traditional architecture. Now people have added call managers to this type of architecture and then uh, trunked like maybe a call manager inside and trunked to VCS like a SIP trunk to there that way they can have their phones you know uh, 9971s or whatever call the Tamburg endpoints too but again just keep this in your head don't get too muddled up and in, in, in call manager we're talking about call controls so let's go take a look at the next thing so we're still talking about traditional VCS architecture we're gonna talk a little bit about B2B what does it mean um, in the traditional VCS architecture uh, when they talk about B2B business to business audio video is what they're talking about now uh, let's cut this in half here's the internet here's enterprise A uh, we have the same architecture, right? We have this TC endpoint. Uh, you see his registration here. 
goes to VCS control, we have the VCS expressway and the DMZ, we have our firewalls, we have the internet, we have company B over here, and we have firewalls, and we have a DMZ, we have VCS control, expressway, and we have another TCM point over here. So we can make calls between these two entities. Uh, you can say there's kind of a SIP trunk in between those two. Now, uh, with this these uh, this expressway here, we kind of um, not circumvent is, is the wrong word, but we protect these connections through encryption uh, with PKI. So we do identity uh, authentication and things like that between these two uh, entities uh, over the internet. But that's what we mean, or VCS architecture, when it's talking about B two B. Uh, audio video so you can call other enterprises other uh, other uh, people in your supply chain and things like that that you need to communicate with now doesn't have anything to do with I am in presence here this is strictly calling audio video all right uh, um, let's go to the next one so here's the new expressway CNE stuff same server software different keys same architecture you can see it's the same architecture what's different here is the registration look at where now i have a 9971 inside the enterprise it's registered to call manager okay now i have this jabber client out here and guess what very similar to the vcs uh control and edge but look what happens here we don't stop and register to the expressway C. Remember, the expressway C doesn't have any registration uh, registration capabilities. It registers, kind of proxies everything all the way through. So this Jabber client that's out here would use all these security mechanisms first to register through and create those connections, the TLS and encrypted connections, through the firewall, through expressway uh, uh, E, through expressway C, and eventually register uh, to uh, call manager as if it were sitting inside the enterprise. All right, call manager is none the wiser. There's nothing that we have to do to call manager. Uh, call manager doesn't know that it's outside the enterprise or anything like that. So um, do I wanna go through any of this? You can see signaling all goes back to call manager if we're making a call between these two. And then you can see the media itself is going to travel all the way through here as well. Again, imp uh, 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 imploring those the um, uh, employing those uh, security mechanisms, uh, secure RTP and TLS for signaling, and all these other things that need to be uh, uh, tightened up when we go through uh, firewalls from the internet to the uh, to the enterprise. <clears throat> okay. Let's go on. So let's talk about the code, the code itself. When I talk about when I'm talking about the code, I'm talking about the server. I'm talking about the the DVD that comes uh, um, uh, with this uh, particular software, the software that's on DVD, or for you virtual guys, the OVA that's deployed. So the OVA is one code base. It's one thing that I download. I download uh, I download this one thing. It's it's the same for Expressway. It's the same for VCS. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's the it's the um, licensing that I install in it that lights up uh, that makes it either VCS control, a VCS expressway, or an expressway C, so say core, or expressway E edge. Okay, so it's important to realize that uh, for you technical guys. This was a hard concept for me to get over because I wanted a DVD or an OVA to deploy that said VCS Expressway. And I wanted another OVA that said VCS Edge. Well, that's that's not the way it works. There's one code base. Now, Cisco has said it may change in the future. So they may be two different code bases, maybe, but today it's not. As of, as of today, as of last month, let's say. That's the last time I really looked at it. Okay, I won't go through the rest of this. I just want you to know that uh, it's license keys that uh, make uh, these particular servers what they are. 
So what does Expressway C&E do? You guys should already know what it does. It creates VPN-less access for Jabber clients. Jabber for Windows, Jabber for iPhone, Jabber for iPad, Jabber for Android. All those Jabber clients are enabled now to uh, register through Expressway E and C, or C and E, all the way to Call Manager. It also uh, does VPNless access for TC software, which is just like the traditional VCS core and, uh, excuse me, VCS control and Expressway. <laughs> Uh, Expressway C and E also allows for TC software clients to uh, traverse the internet, traverse the firewalls, and register to Call Manager. All right, so that's the difference: registering to Call Manager. It also enables B two B voice and video. Remember, I talked about the traditional VCS product enabling B two B videos uh, to to partners out on the internet. Uh, we'll talk about how that happens directly or DNS based when we get into the configuration and we dive a little bit more uh, deeper in there. It also, coming in 8.5 as I understand, is going to be the mechanism um, that uh, you can deploy federation. So IMNP, we're talking about, when we talk about federation, we're talking instant messaging and, and, and presence. So I can federate with somebody outside of my business. So. There's two things here. B2B voice video to people outside my enterprise and IMMP Federation, my IMMP to outside my enterprise. So these are two different technologies, two different things, two different licensing types and things that happen inside the expressway. So separate those uh, in your mind for now. And then uh, it uses standardized security protocols that are well understood in the uh, uh, information security world, how they traverse the firewalls, how they uh, 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 do this client server thing and, and bring up a, uh, from an internal to an external connection and then nail that up and then inside that pipe they can multiplex things that are coming in from the outside. We'll look at how that works but that's basically from a high level what it allows um, uh, customers, our customers, to do if we uh, deploy this product for them or we consult them on how to deploy this product. In. So let's look at the VCS and Expressway feature comparison. So I'm going to try not to mix you up here. I told you that there's two different products here. I told you there's Expressway, that's the new thing, and here's all the things it can do. Okay, so this is going to make sense. Mobile remote access, that's the feature that allows us to bring a Jabber client from the internet inside the enterprise register call manager. It allows business to business video. I can call out to um, another business using uh, my endpoints uh, inside my enterprise or connected through Expressway that are out on the internet as well. Um, we won't talk about this, we will talk about uh, video internet working. No, I'll talk a little bit about that later. Let's uh, let's skip these. This is what I want you to look at. Video telepresence registration. Remember the Expressway series. I said it's it's missing the line side. It doesn't come with a line side. You can't register telepresence endpoints to it. Uh, it's going to proxy the re registration all the way to call manager. A voice, a video session management control. No, it doesn't do that. WebEx enabled telepresence. We'll talk about that in another uh, in another. Um, uh, training session. Enhanced security, that's nothing more than uh, Jitsi is a, is a uh, uh, Department of Defense uh, umbrella term that you know you can go get certified and things like that. You can get your system certified and it's going to be Department of Defense approved um, so to speak. Uh, so it does not do that either. So let's look at the Cisco VCS family, the traditional VCS control and edge. Look at here. You can do mobile and remote access as well. So you can get Jabber clients to register through the VCS control and Expressway into Call Manager also. You can do all these other things. So let's just make sure we understand this. The reason Cisco did this is remember it's the same code base. And what they did, they had to make a decision. Uh, 
they had to make a decision in okay if we release this how do we release it because we want to give we want to give the ability for people that buy cool licenses and buying call manager and cups and unity we want that we want it to give it to them for free we want them to be able to put this server uh, in the in the DMZ and put one on the enterprise and be able to connect these jabber clients through so they decided to make a product out of it and they made an expressway product and they said all oh, this is free you can do all well excuse me this remote uh, mobile and remote access is for free now what about those people that have VCS's already and have Tamburg telepresence endpoints and all this stuff and they have call manager as well um, since it was the same code base and they were a little shaky on this at first they said okay you know we'll go ahead and allow mobile or remote access through those VCS that VCS control and expressway as well if you have a VCS already you upgrade to 8.11 and we'll give you this feature key to light up the mobile remote access and you can start putting telepresence, excuse me, you can start putting uh, Jabber clients out on the internet and they can securely um, register to call manager. Now, they are not advising this and I've set this up in the lab and I wouldn't advise it either. The reason being is there's no real, each one of these, like if you deploy this expressway, there's sizing requirements, like only if you buy the little server or you deploy the little OVA, there's only so many you know clients that can register through to call manager. Um, if you buy a Cisco VCS, you have a Cisco VCS and you have you know a large OVA or a small appliance or a medium appliance. Or there's a certain amount of registrations that you can have from TC endpoints, and there's a certain amount of B2B video. There's a certain amount of all these other things that can that can be done. When you start mixing the two, the requirements or the size the capabilities and the sizing and the compute power and things start getting a little fuzzy I haven't seen a good matrix or table yet that says if you have VCS the traditional VCS control and edge and you add mobile or remote access uh, you can only do 100 registrations if you have uh, you can only do 100 MRAs if you have 100 registrations of TC endpoints, you know, uh, uh, things like that. Or you can only do so many MRAs if you uh, have so many business to business video lit up or you're doing internet working with different codecs and things like that, which a VCS does. So uh, the recommendation right now that I've heard from Cisco and my recommendation as well so thus far is these things need to be two different things. Uh, if your customer has a Cisco VCS, that's great. And they say they want mobile and remote access. The first thing out of my mouth would say, okay, what you need to stand up two more servers or two more clusters, an expressway C and E. Let's don't mess around with your VCS uh, uh, core and edge that you already have. Let's stand up two more servers and then we can get our sizing right and things like that because we don't want to muddy the water. You already have an existing video audio infrastructure that uh, the registering uh, TC endpoints. Now, the customer may say, hey, I'm migrating all my TC endpoints to register with Call Manager because that's kind of the, the uh, direction Cisco is going. They're going away from, in my view, from everything registering the VCS uh, control and edge um, to registering to Call Manager. So they may be some my uh, uh, some kind of migration going or migration in your customer's head from going to VCS to ex to uh, excuse me things connected to VCS or registered to VCS going to call manager in that in that scenario you may say okay hey well let's let's move everything first so everything that's connected to VCS or registered to VCS let's register to call manager after that then we have some clean servers and there's nothing registered there and then we can start turning remote access up and we have a better gauge of how many uh, MRA users can be out of internet land, how many Jabber users can register through. Hopefully that made a little sense. I'm going to continue. Okay, Jabber remote access options. There's still two options, right? You guys know that. Uh, if, uh, you can always AnyConnect or Junos Pulse or whatever VPN infrastructure uh, uh, your customer has today 
they can use that to get to call manager and cups and do jabber and all that other stuff. The uh, and that makes sense. It makes sense. Think about how we work today. We bring up we bring up our laptops and we bring up uh, Juno's Pulse and we get into our uh, VPN into our infrastructure and then we bring up our Jabber clients or same time same time clients or whatever. So that kind of makes sense for desktops. It kind of gets to me, in my opinion, anyway, a little fuzzy with. Uh, uh, mobile devices. Mobile devices, people have kind of got used to picking up a mobile device and, and, and things just working. Uh, it's kind of cumbersome if you have a mobile device and you got a VPN in, especially if you think of an iPhone or an Android uh, 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 cellular device. It's kind of weird if you got a VPN in and then bring up a Jabber client just so you can you know, have IMP. And then VPN, really, VPN is your whole phone. And then there could be some attack vectors, and there could be some applications that the enterprise doesn't want uh, the uh, internal network exposed to, and things like that. So this is where the expressway comes in uh, to play. Also, if you could think, uh, you guys that use Good uh, on your iPads and iPhones and things like that, it's very analogous to that. So if uh, some of you guys use Good and don't VPN in. Um, that's how I use it. I just bring up good and I uh, put in my password and there's a secure channel all the way into Verizon, all the way into the enterprise and then I can use my email, look at my calendar and things like that. So I don't have to VPN in. I don't have to bring up a VPN on my on my iPad. Now I know some of you guys do. There's some policies. I don't know all of them but some of you guys do. But anyway, that's the that's the kind of direction that Expressway or the stance or the technology expressway uses as well. You can bring up Jabber and in the background it's going to create the secure channel uh, um, use these security protocols to go into the enterprise network uh, via expressway um, C&E and then register to call manager and register to CUPS and then you can you know use your instant messaging impressions and get to those subject matter experts you yeah, you always have your iPhone in your pocket or your iPad in your bag and um, I don't need to fire up my laptop and VPN in and, 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 and fire up same time you know or things like that this this new technology um, would would um, uh, enable you just to fire up the application have it always on you can roam in or out of the enterprise and it's always gonna work okay uh, this is kinda weird so bear with me on this one uh, I want you to ignore the uh, the the all these uh, columns right here. So let's ignore service category type, service delivery, and primary competitor because the two important things that you need to know to discuss things with your customer and look at architecture are the two outside columns. So here we have devices. So what do we have in our portfolio of endpoints when we sell UCAS or sell a Cisco UC? We have endpoints at Jabber. We have telepresence endpoints that are now able to register to call manager. We have the, the our phones, 6900, 7900s, 9900s, all these other phones. And then Cisco likes to, I grabbed this, this, this table from Cisco, so I wanted to keep it the same. They uh, categorize uh, SIP trunks as devices too. I don't necessarily, but I'm gonna leave it in here for now. And then we have these new uh, 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 breed of phones, DX650s. We have DX70s and 80s now, which are really neat. If you haven't seen those, go take a look at them on Cisco's website. So here are all the devices that we can say endpoints. Again, um, these are the ones that make sense to me. This one doesn't, so we're going to leave that one alone for now. Now, this last column here, let's call it product position. Let's call it uh, how we connect via the internet okay keep that in your head how do we connect via the internet if we're out in internet land and we have a Java client well we're gonna connect up with the product expressway how are we gonna connect up if we have a telepresence uh, 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 endpoint uh, we're gonna connect up with expressway how are we gonna connect up if we have phones now I don't particularly like this I wish you would say expressway here as well, but it doesn't, unfortunately. So what does that tell you? That tells you if a customer wants 
several types of endpoints deployed to their telecommuters that are going to be using this TLS technology or VPN technology that the product or the technology or how we're going to connect into the enterprise is going to be a different type of product. Uh, we're going to use VPN. We can use ASA here, so we could we, we should say ASA here, but Cisco's direction is to use uh, cubes. But I'm going to put cube, uh, you know, and ASA because that's how we can do it today. Okay, and then these new breed of phones, um, DX650s, uh, Expressway. So and it, DX, I'm going to say. The, the new DX's as well. Oh, I can't get in there. Let's see. Can I put uh, D, D, X, uh, 70 and 80. So those are the new, new. and as I understand it, those phones, since they're kind of the same uh, code base, they're going to be able to connect up to Expressway as well. Okay, we'll go over this SIP trunk and why that's here. For now, just think of this. The reason they put it in here is because B2B. Remember I told you about the B2B audio video that we looked at through Expressway, that trunk side kind of thing where we could do B2B. I don't want to confuse you now, and some people have a little bit of trouble and a little bit of heartache kind of putting these together because they're used to cubes or something like that being these edge devices for, for trunks. So let's table that for now. Okay, that is it for part one. If you have any questions, please email me at anson.garcia at one.verizon.com. Uh, you can also find me on same time as well as uh, our internal uh, Jabber and uh, Link uh, systems. So um, anyway, I hope this has been helpful and this is the end of part one.